Hey, moving on in the detailing trailer build. In this video, I'm going to be showing you building walls. And unfortunately, I didn't take a lot of video because there was a lot of unknown and it was kind of difficult to try to video everything and also be able to do the work. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the process that I went through. You'll be able to see kind of the skeleton of what the walls are going to look like. And first things first, I started with putting up the, the two by four that goes along the side wall which is angled. And so I had to make an angled cut to be able to properly fasten it to the wall. And once I did that, then I was able to kind of build off of that. So the next thing I did was I laid track and here's that. So we are working on the framing. And uh, as you can see, I ran runners on the floor. Then uh, maybe some self-tapping screws or some self, what they call them self-drilling uh, screws. So I put those in there. I used the C-clamps to put it in place. So all I did was, once I got it where I wanted it, I would clamp this and then just drill the screw directly through there. And uh, I bought this magnetic level with this so I can just hang it right off that stud, get it level. And as I go up and I'm adding, I'm adding support kind of up through it because that's what I'm gonna do. All I have to do is keep the level on it, look for level, put my piece on, clamp it, put my screws through, and uh, that's it. So as far as making the cuts, so here's what I'm doing. As a quick side note, if you haven't yet, I would highly encourage you go check out my channel where I do all kinds of videos on auto detailing the right way, methods, tips, tricks, uh, plastic restoration, paint correction, a mold detailing trailer build, which is absolutely epic. I also do a two-part epoxy floor. I also show installation of different gear and there's just a ton of information that's on my channel. I would highly recommend you subscribe to stay up to date. And I really do appreciate you watching my videos and let's get back to the original video. What I did is I started with an eight foot piece of stud and what I do is I marked it. So wherever the measurement was, I marked it with my pencil. Then I came back and I cut it. It's very simple. You just cut it straight down. Actually, when I make my next one, I'll go ahead and show you how it's done. When I'm done, this is what I have left. They say that all you really need, I think it depends on who you talk to, but if you look at this, the way I see it, I'm just being practical here. I feel like if I left that tab up there, it'd be good, but normally they remove this tab, just put the sides on there, and then they put this piece on. Okay, so we're coming along with the framing, and here's what I did so far. I cut the track, laid it down, and uh, this is my first attempt at this, so I would say it's built like a tank. Things not going anywhere ever. I mean, it's rock solid. Anyway, so I'm tying in up against the rail here, the side wall here, um, obviously down there, and then everything kind of ties in. I have all these supports. I'm also using this rail here, so this will be tied up up there, and then I'm going to have a header that runs across, similar to this one here. I have to cut a notch for this space, this space, this space, and then two more once I get over to uh, this area here. Oops, sorry. There we go. So, let me show you how I do this. So, first thing I did was I cut the length of the piece. The way I cut it was with these right here. These are Wiss machine metal cutters. Next thing I did was I measured the distance. So if you look at this end here, which I've already cut, scribed a line, cut it here. I got two lines, two lines, and then there's gonna be two more over on that side. But I'll show you how I cut, how I cut this right here. Oops, let's see if we can get a good picture here. All I do is I'm lining up the face of the jaw with my line, getting it as straight as I can. Once I have it to where I feel like it's straight, go ahead and make a cut. 
I'm gonna cut all the way down. Just like that. Do the same thing on this side. Again, I'm gonna line up my blade. Let me get it as straight as possible. Now this doesn't have to be super accurate. Because I'm just cutting clearance. Put this thing up. Clip it off. And that's it. So I'm gonna do the, for the rest of those down there. I'm gonna do the same thing. Then I'm gonna install it. Okay. So when I go to install the piece, you'll see that there's a notch right. Not notch, but kind of lip sticking up. I'm going to flatten that out using these doodads, also made by Wiss. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to smash it. All that's going to do is leave a fat, flat face. So when I do put that piece up against there, it's going to sit flat against there versus, versus not so flat. So the next thing that I did was I attached the studs using screws. I attached those to the rail that is on the trailer of Op. Once I got that done, I went ahead and brought in the header piece and attached that to the studs. And I just used the same screws and the same methods as I showed earlier, where I use a clamp and that provides support. And then I can put, put a screw directly through the two pieces and it holds it together. Then I went ahead and started reinforcing the areas with uh, wooden supports and I put those in between the studs. Then I noticed I had an issue with where the corner meets in the backhand side. So what I ended up doing was took some measurements and started making some specialized cuts of wood so I could help support the back end. And as you can see, so here's me cutting them and then here's the wooden supports. And then finally you can see them installed in the back side and this provides for extra stability. Now that the wall framing is done, I can focus on the enclosure for the generator. And to do that, to start with, I took two 2 by 4s I cut them to length, and I installed them on the left wall and also on the back wall. And these are going to provide for supports for the plywood that's going to be on top. Once I got the side pieces and everything installed, I, I then cut 2 by 4s for the side supports of the enclosure. And once this is done, then I'm able to put plywood on the top, and that stabilizes everything. Next course of action is to cut the plywood for the walls and so I cut all those pieces and then I put them in place then I'm going to focus on the drawers now that I got the main frame put up and I at least have the plywood cut I'm going to start putting in some drawers and do that I'm actually going to put one back here so in this area here then I'm also going to put one right here in front. Two different styles. One style is this basket style here. I'll be able to put things in the bottom, things in the top, put baskets in there, whatever. The other style is a trash can style. And I'm going to use this for my dirty rags. I'm going to have one for, let's call it the good dirty rags. Then the other one's going to be for, let's call it the less than stellar <laughs> dirty rags. But I want to keep them separate when I wash them. And so, hence the trash cans. All right, so I'm going to continue working on this right here all i'm going to be doing is putting these together and then i'm going to mount them in place and then i'll cut out the plywood afterward so I'll, I'll mount everything and then the last step will be mounting the plywood to it after i pull it off and cut it okay so now i'm on the back side and i want to see what my mounting location options are i do have some room to move it in maybe an inch yeah. Actually, that's about it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll cut this straight here. I'll make sure that I use my square, cut it nice and square along the front face there. And then I'll also cut it straight up and down on the other side of this. And then I will also mark the holes, Ooh, kinda hard to see, on the front face there. And then mount the door to the slide out. That's the next step. After that, I'm going to probably reinforce back here. So I want something back here to stabilize these two posts, this one and the far one. That way it's nice and sturdy. I'll be bolted down to the floor in the four places, then also back here to be continued. Okay, so after some adjustment, let's see, let's see how this thing works. Okay, okay, not bad.
drawer number two. So, there's that. I think garbage cans will go in the back. And then, here you go. A little soft close. Once I got all the plywood in place, the next focus is going to be on the FRP. So I cut new pieces for everything that was left. And what I did was I fastened everything with screws. So nothing in this is using glue or anything. It's all with screws. So this entire thing can be taken apart and put back together if need be ever. So that's why I opted for screws. So that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And I hope you have a great day or great night. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.